Welcome to Fred Taylor Park here for this ASB Premiership Round 6 fixture between Waitakere United and Waibop United. Well, my name is Seamus Martin and I am sitting in the hot seat for Gordon Glenn Watson, who is somewhere between Agadir and Auckland. Well, the stage is set for a fantastic match here today. The uh, sun is shining, birds are chirping and all in readiness here as we uh, look forward to the two teams entering the field of play. And referees for today's match, Campbell Kirk War. He will be assisted by Glenn Lockery, Nick van der Selm, and in the fourth official's chair, Chris Walken. So a very experienced referees team we have as we see the teams entering the field of play. Well, just one match in progress at the moment of round six of this ASB Premiership, and it's uh, Team Wellington currently leading 1-0 over Wanderers. It's a curtain raiser for the Wellington Phoenix match in the A-League down there in Wellington as we look at the Premiership standings, and a lot even, a very even uh, leaderboard we have this season. Auckland City, of course, uh, share the lead with Waitakere United, and the emphasis will be on Waitakere today to pick up three points. They can't afford to drop any points while uh, Auckland are away and for Wybop an opportunity to climb into the top four outright if they can pick up the game today. Well three changes for Paul Temple and Brian Shelley's Waitakere United side, two enforced following the red cards to Chad Coombs and Richard Cardozo. Sam French comes in for Cardozo and uh, Daniel Morgan and Hache Reniga make their uh, appearances this week. A 4-4-2, a slight change in formation for Waitakere. Uh, the Temple will usually favouring the 4-3-3, but those two changes have uh, enforced a, a change in formation. And for the visitors, Waibop, quietly confident coming up State Highway 1 and over the Bombay Hills out to West Auckland. They've also made uh, three changes to this, or two changes to this side, I should say, with uh, Galera coming in for Liam Higgins, who still struggles with a head injury, and Jack McNabb starting for Milos Nikolic. They'll also line up in a 4-4-2 formation with number 14 Max Manko in a slightly withdrawn role. So, the stage is set. We're joining the referees in the middle for the coin toss shortly. As we see the familiar face of Aaron Scott, the Wybop United captain. Of course, graced Fred Taylor Park for many years as part of the Waitakere United side. Now, applying his trade for his hometown side. Well, one of the first things you'll notice is the circles on the pitch there. I overheard the refereeing team as they go through their final checks. Comment as they arrived here at Fred Taylor Park. Oh, we've got the circles, which makes things just a little bit difficult in terms of judging that offside, but I'm sure... Uh, Campbell Kirk War there will have full faith in his assistant referees to make the correct calls. So we see the Chilean connection there of Waibop United. And much will be made. It should be said that this fixture may be in years gone by, and speaking to the, the two coaches today, it uh, could have been seen as a, a real chance for the home side to pick up three points, but uh, speaking to Paul Temple, he commented that it is really a, uh, a, a much more even contest. And we're underway here at Fred Taylor Park. Waitakere in their traditional all-white strip, Waibop United in the all-black. And it's Brian Shelley, the co-coach. We'll just hand it off to Hashe Reniga, who starts it right back in place of Chad Coombs. Finds the big man French. Played all the way back to Andy McNeil in the Wybop goal. Come out from Scotland this season and has looked impressive in the opening stages of the ASB Premier season. Well, Fred Taylor Park bathed in sunshine here. Well, Shelley loses out on the top of the box. It's McNabb. Well, shot blocked. Here's Shaden Young. Chance and straight at Robertson. Well, Shaden Young with a match's first opportunity. Son, of course, of Auckland City legend Grant Young. It's Morgan. Finds Hobsick McVeigh, who was very impressive last week. <laughs> Commentator's curse as his first pass isn't 
the greatest. Here's Hobson McVay again. Second pass isn't the greatest either, so he's hoping for a more consistent period of play for Hobson McVay as he wins the header there and finds his midfield partner Butler. Just settles things down here. Well, it's been a few loose passes from Waitakere in the early stages. So we see Mark Jones driving through midfield and skipping past Myers. Well, last pass as he tried to find McNabb, just wouldn't stick. Scott on the far side fires Lissette and all the way back to McNeil. Well, an opportunity there early for Shaden Young. It's partially blocked and straight at Robinson as Hogg wins that. I mentioned Scott. He quipped to me on arrival that he wasn't sure which changing room to enter today after so many years in the all-wide of Waitakere United. It's Morgan wins that and finds Butler. Stansfield, a goal scorer last week. Let's look to play Morgan down the line. No, here's Hobson McVeigh. And Raniga, good ball through. Well, clever footwork from Butler. And Hobson McVeigh just opens it out for Hogg. His ball in, clever play by Stansfield. And that's cleared away by Nomoto there. Who, of course, was part of Waitakere's squad last season made the trip down to be part of Wybop and Hobson McVeigh to take the game's first corner delivery in and cleared by Lissette only as far as Butler who finds Raniga well, clever ball Butler and Morgan oh well, Stansfield with that second run. Uh, Stansfield loses out. And here's Manko, another former Waitakere United player. Second stint with Waibop. Well, Waikato FC in their former life. And now Waibop United. Oh, big switch of play. Hogg forced to head clear on the far side. Well, opening five minutes. It's carved a couple of half chances for both sides. And that one drifts harmlessly out of play. Well, as I mentioned earlier, very sunny conditions here. So Robinson just taking his time, allowing his team to maybe get a few breaths in after just over five minutes. Right, Ronig has been in the play a lot in the opening stages. Former under-17 international. Big clearance from McNeil, comfortably dealt with by Myers and Hobson McVeigh. Just a little cute there. And then ball breaks for Manko. Finds Young. What can he do one on one? Oh, good ball in, and Myers with the touch could have gone anywhere. In the end, it's a corner for the visitors.
So the first chance from set piece for Wybop. Oh, apologies. This is Nomoto on the ball. One of two players of Japanese descent in the Waibop side. The other, Takahiro Yokota in the number four. Well, McNeil seems content just to hit those raking clearances in the early stages and look for one of the targets up front this time. Free kick spotted by War. And Robinson, McNeil's opposite number. Well, his clearance only as far as Scott. This is McNabb, Tauranga City United player. Finds Nomoto in a bit of space and his early ball. Well, Shaden Young steaming up. What can he do? Manko does well to protect it. Tries to create some space and snuffed out by Hobson McVeigh. Well, Shaden Young. My Bob's number 16 in his first season of ASB Premiership. It's exciting down this left hand side as Myers well, just clips it in for Loudon, another impressive player in his first season of ASB Premiership. As Renega sets off. Butlers look good, impressive in these opening stages. Oh. War finds a foul there on Shaden Young. I just see there a little tussle between. The two. And Namoto standing over the free kick in a similar area to where Waitakere conceded last week the opening goal with Hawks Bay United. That match, of course, finished 2 2. So Namoto's free kick has drifted into the area and Butler deals with it. Comfortably, although he's lost out here. As Jones is crosses not one of his best. But why Bob retain possession? And all the way back to McNeil. Not again. Just seem to be favouring the right attack. Mark Jones patrolling that flank for Wybop. Here's Jones. It's a dangerous ball. As far as McNabb and he's... Well, hit the upright. Well, the first real chance falls to the visitors. And it was a great ball in from Jones. Half cleared. Fell to McNabb and here we see Jones's ball in, back heel. Well, McNabb maybe, if he has a second look, will think he should have done better. A player with a prolific strike rate for Tauranga City United. Well corner here and it's Shade and Young well not sure if that was a, a planned move
Young again. Again in the near post. And a goal kick signalled. So it seems the right side of the Y Bob attack is preferred. Mark Jones, the former Taupo and current Hamilton Wanderers player, is Stansfield at the other end. Great ball, and here's the first goal. And it's the big man, Sam French, number nine, in the 13th minute. Well, a little against the run of play, but. A great finish and Stansfield with just a dinked ball in and well a well taken goal from French he's a big man that's for sure and used every bit of his height to open the scoring here at Fred Taylor Park and it's 1-0 well just moments earlier McNabb had hit the upright and just goes to show you have to take your chances. Well, offside there on the goal scorer. Well, Paul Temple was desperate for the points today. Said to me before the match that Waitakere couldn't afford to drop any more points while their Super City rivals, Auckland City, were away. And they're off to a good start here. There's Scott whips in a first-time ball, dealt with by Renega. Oh. He's young again. He's looked. He's looked uh, dangerous. So why Bob looking to utilise both flanks, left and right, through Shade and Young and Mark Jones. Robinson gets things restarted. Yeah, good work, Stansfield. Finds Loudon. And not a bad effort. Plucked out by McNeil. And again, a raking clearance trying to find Jones. Or well, that time, Manko. Yakota. Deals with it and the ball finds its way well, towards Young, but muscled off it by Young Harshe Raniga. Well, Butler asked a lot of Morgan there. And Hobson McVeigh wins that. Nice touch, just a little heavy, but he finds Hogg. Now what can the all-white do down the left? It's an early ball. And Morgan's done well to keep that in. Well, nice interplay. It was almost a similar opportunity to Stansfield's goal last week. But... Uh, 
wasn't able to spin and get his shot away. Here is Stansfield. Manko just showed a bit much to Shelley there. A oh, little tussle between Myers and McNabb. McNabb looked perplexed as we see just on the replay. It looked like McNabb had won that cleanly. And well, a little bit of afters, nothing in that really. Oh, good jump from Morgan. Right. Only as far as Varela and the number 18 for Wybop. McNabb wins another header. Oh, this is broken for Manko. One on one with Shelley. Finds Varela. There's Jones with the ball in. Shaden Young had a good side of it, but Morgan did well. And it's broken for Renega. Well, a brand new combination on this right hand side for Waitakere. Arshe, Renega, and Dan Morgan. As Temple and Shelley switch to a more familiar 4 4 2, it should be said. Says Hobbs and McVeigh. Just checks out. Finds that man, Reniga. Scott does well to win that, and Namoto uh, cleaned up. Just a smattering of a crowd here. Just on the far side. I imagine a lot of people will be looking for shade as the Auckland sun graces us on a Saturday afternoon. Beautiful conditions for summer football. Now that was clever from Loudon. Morgan just sold Hobson McVeigh a little short there. Now overlap from Galera. That's a great ball and all well just out of range for McNabb. There's Jones. And this was Galera recalled after a suspension and a clever ball there was sent off in the 3-3 draw with Wanderers it was Marcel Galera Corbera a second yellow card and the ball heads towards his area but it's won by Yokota Is that man Galera? Uh, some appeals for high feet, and Shaden Young's done well. Finds McNabb, Manko in a bit of space inside, but he can't find him. Here's Varela, finds McNabb. Just Myers, a little clumsy there. Just left a knee. McNabb looked like he sensed the, the contact coming, and there's a little toe. And sets up an attacking opportunity for Wybop. I'm sure it'll be Nomoto on the ball. There he is there, the number six. It was clever from McNabb as he broke down the left. Saw Myers coming across and just poked it past and looked for that contact just to create a free kick opportunity. Now here's Nomoto. The ball's 
Ball in at the near post and well it looked as though Manko got a clean connection on that but Wars found a corner which I think would indicate that Myers got the last touch and another set piece opportunity Nomoto again over the ball it's the ball in and Robinson under pressure got enough on that Jones recycles and Nomoto's ball is not a good one oh, not his less favoured left foot straight out for a goal kick well good keeping from Robinson under pressure on his goal under his crossbar I should say and got enough just to clear that one away uh, Robinson who's in contention for the ASB Premiership team of the decade strong from Manko and belatedly war awards a free kick and that man in shot Jake Butler number 17 is also another contention in contention for that ASB Premiership team of the decade in the midfield role and if you're looking to vote just head to the website www.asppremiership.co.nz and get your vote and an opportunity to win a trip for you and a few of your friends to an ASB Premiership match anywhere in the country oh good touch McNabb this Myers Hold strong. Well, they're making it a fist of it, Why, Bob? As Robinson finds Loudon. That Jones cleans up for Why, Bob. And a good ball to find Scott. Another early ball in. Well, Shelley cuts it out. The Waitakere co coach. Well, Morgan. Just played that without checking, and it was cut out by Varela. Raniga comes in hard there. Well, Manko looked up, thought about a shot, it looked to just keep the ball, and it finds its way out to Jones. 1v1 with Loud in the two sevens. Jones gets his ball in. Manko. Oh, well, good feet from Max Manko just created it enough space and just hit that shot on the turn as we see here just whipped his body around and that didn't look like it uh, missed Robinson's goal by by too much well Manko is a real danger at ASB Premiership level Spent some time in Costa Rica and Argentina recently. And now back in New Zealand. Here's Lissette. Back to McNeil and is he going to look to find that channel? on the right hand side of the pitch well, he does and Myers header just rolls out well it's a shame Liam, Higgin Liam Higgins isn't in the side today misses out with a, just a head knock but he is a long throw exponent and with these long free kicks that oh, long clearances I should say that McNeil's hitting they would be long throw opportunities for Wybot but his place has been taken by Marcel Galera and here he is on the ball Galera well, reverses it straight to Butler oh well French just looked to check his run. In the end it rolled through to McNeil, who clips it into that right-hand area again. Hog. Well, that's deja vu. We're back down on the far side. Scott gets things going. Finds Varela. That's a clever ball into the channel for Manko. 
Uh, Manko just ran out of space and his clutch is at an ankle. And it looks to be moving freely. And Valera finds compatriot. Galera, here's Shaden Young, just looking for space to whip it in. The ball comes in eventually, and it's cleared by Butler. And Shaden Young not afraid to take players on, one on one. And so far, Reniga seems to have him under control. Here's McNabb, uh, not the best of balls back to. Galera, he's on the ball now, finds Namoto, and here's Aaron Scott, ooh, well, I haven't seen Aaron Scott score too many in his career, dating all the way back to Hamilton Boys High School, but he found himself in a bit of space there, and let fly, it was a good connect, good height, just didn't have the direction. Enough to trouble this man, Robinson. Well, they're pressing high, why, Bob? And... Just looking to force Waitakere into playing long. Oh, that must have taken a touch off a Waibot player. Uh, a lot of the players have been on that far side of the pitch. Uh, we see Ian Hogg just looking for options, and he seems a bit frustrated. Well, he ends up going long, and Waitakere don't retain position. Uh, just confirmation of that score. It's Waitakere United 1-0, courtesy of Sam French, is a, another long, long distance effort. Goes harmlessly wide, and... Wars found a free kick here. Well, he could argue himself into the book. Better off just accepting it and moving on. Well, Namoto and Manko look interested in this one as Robinson just gets his wall sorted. There's Namoto. Well, looks like he might be the man to assume responsibility. Four in Robinson's wall. Well, one of those moments in a match. Is it Manko? Is it Namoto? Well, the answer is Namoto and... Well, the wall served its purpose, and Robinson was able to force him to hit the open part of the goal and dealt with that comfortably. Oh, Manko's done well to come up with that. And Shaden Young, is that going to go for a corner? I think a throw in. Well, just on half an hour gone here. We bathed, as I said earlier, in sunshine. A beautiful afternoon for football. Scalera gets free. And his cross. There's no cause for alarm. Well, clever there from Varela.
Well, it hasn't all been one-way traffic. Why about creating a few half chances? Hit the upright earlier through McNabb. Felt he probably could have done a bit better. Here's Namoto. Finds Young one on one again. Ooh. Well, was that a shot? Was that a cross? Only he will know. And again, as I said, not afraid to take Raniga on one on one. And I think I'm going to call that a shot. Didn't trouble Robinson in goal. Have to do very well to beat a man of his experience from that angle. He's French, the goal scorer. Well, an agricultural effort from Yokota. And eventually it's big title of set, the man affectionately known as Yogi. He's Stansfield. Oh, French, I should say. A oh, free kick has gone the way of the home side. Well, Hogg, he's not known to hold back, but he's won the free kick there. And it's Aaron Scott in a bit of discomfort. Well, looks like he'll receive a bit of treatment as War well, just asks Hogg to calm down. Well, McNeil, who was beaten for that first goal, will have to be on his toes here. Well, we just see McNabb getting a few instructions from Smith. He's really looked to establish a team culture as Peter Smith. Uh, Tauranga based with this uh, new entity, Wybop United. Really spent his pre-season trying to establish a uh, culture and you know encourage players from the local region. And the fruits of that are seen today with players like McNabb. Oh, there we see Paul Marshall in attendance, enjoying the sunshine. Well, I was saying we've seen players like McNabb from Tauranga. Mark Jones, who was most of his formative football in Taupo and now playing his trade in Hamilton. Tyler Lissette, another Hamilton boy. Aaron Scott lured back home, so Hobson Mc... Oh, it's French, the goal scorer, and that was another opportunity just to extend that lead. Well, as I was saying, a uh, bit more of a homegrown feel to this Wybop side, although still a few players making the journey down from Auckland to the Waikato Bay of Plenty region. Well, back here with Stansfield. Well, Wybop emerged with it, and this is Manko. He just seems to be playing with more of a free roll rather than an out-and-out -out striker, and commits a foul on the halfway line. There's evidence of that. He was listed as a, as a forward in conjunction with McNabb today, but picking the ball up, well, there he is on the halfway line, and just committing a foul on his former teammate. Tim Myers, who's just exchanging pleasantries with War. Never shy of a word, Myers. A lot, uh, a lot bigger, Tim Myers, it must be said. And he's pushing a bit of tin in the weights room. As Hobson McVeigh takes that short and finds Morgan on the far side. Just switched wings with Loudon. 
Well, Hogg's lost out and it's cleared eventually. Only as far as that man Myers and a bullet hitter. There's Namoto. McNabb, that's a clever little ball. And another ball from Manko. Here's Young. Well, he, he looks to get that ball on the left foot and drive it into the area to Shaden Young. As I said, he's not afraid to take people on. Son of Grant Young, Auckland City fame. And here's Galera. Finds that man Young. And here's Loudon. As I said, looks to have switched wings with Dan Morgan. And Yokota just finds Lissette. And all the way back to McNeil. Will he clip this in? There it is. Into that right-hand side of the pitch. And this one looks like it'll run out. Well, they're definitely looking to utilise the pace of Mark Jones. There he is in the picture there against Ian Hogg, who's also not such a slow player. A real battle down that far side of the field. Oh, loud, and that was a clever touch, but Raniga just overran it. Oh, there's Shelley. <laughs> Wins the foul. So we head towards the last five minutes of this opening half. It's Waitakere 1, Waibop 0. But an entertaining match, it should be said, so far, as he is young. Well, hint of an offside, but McNabb oh, does well to hustle Raniga. And I mentioned earlier the long throw thread of Liam Higgins. Well, he's not on the side today. This would have been an opportunity I'm sure he would have appreciated. Oh, that's a clever little ball. And a good ball in. Robinson claims it. And looks to spark something on the left-hand side of Waitakere's attack. Although Morgan's ball finds Lissette in the black shirt of Wybop. Ooh. Could have been confusion between the two Waitakere sin halves. Well, Loudon's had his pocket picked. And look to... Oh, here's the first yellow card of the match for Max Manko. For a foul on Hobson McVeigh. And Manko had the ball here. And Loudon steamed in. And, well, Manko just caught Hobson McVeigh there. I think Loudon could count himself a little lucky. As I'm sure Chris Walken is explaining to Peter Smith. Well, nevertheless, first yellow card of the match. In the 39th minute to Wybop, number 14, Max Manko. Well, we saw a few flashes of yellow last week here at Fred Taylor Park. A couple in quick succession to Chad Coombs, who was given his marching orders, and then a straight red card to Richie Cardozo. Waitakere finishing that match with nine men. And two points dropped, it should be, should be said, from 2-1 up to 2-2 two -two in stoppage time. They missed an opportunity to just get a break on their Super City rivals, Auckland City, who of course performed admirably in the FIFA Club World Cup in Agadir against uh, Raja Casablanca, only to fall themselves in stoppage time. I'm sure they'll be proud of their achievements if they're not a little downcast about thinking what if well, here we are anyway back in sunny Auckland 30,000 miles away from Morocco 
30,000 might be an exaggeration. I probably need to get my atlas out or talk to Gordon Glenn Watson just about how long it does take and how far he's travelled. Well, they look comfortable at the back, Wybop. Not afraid to take a touch. Just control things when need be. Here's Galera. Well, it's the second time Loudon's given a free kick away in quick succession as Nomoto gets things started. It's Varela. Well, good touch, Jones. What can he do? Gets his ball in. Robinson comfortable under the threat of McNabb. Uh, he's looked assured today, Danny Robinson. Uh, Yakota wins that. And breaks for Butler who finds Hogg. Well, still we have Morgan on the far side of the pitch. Started on the right-hand side, but he's there giving a foul away on the left-hand side and picks up a booking. Confirmation there, number 14, Dan Morgan. Well, just a little clip on, I think it was Jones. The commentary box just bathed in sunlight as well, making the replays just a little difficult on the eye, even with the sunglasses on. And here's Aaron Scott recovered from that earlier knock. Well, that's just a heave towards the penalty area. A hint of a handball. And given. Well, as I've alluded to a couple of times, very, very hot here in West Auckland. So far, no need for a water break. Had an interesting chat with the referee's assessor, John Cameron, before the match, just regarding water breaks. And uh, they, are, they are stipulated for, but the temperature needs to be well in the 30s with no wet bulb thermometer available here at Fred Taylor Park. It just will be left for the players and referee to use their common sense and discretion to allow players to take fluids on. Shelley just takes the pace of that and well, won, the, won the touch again but he's given it away and again I mentioned just comfortable to play it back. Find McNeil and I reckon I know where this one's going. As we see a minimum of one minute of time added on. And there it goes into the pocket. One by Myers. Only as far as Varela finds Galera. And Young is robbed by Raniga, who plays a ball for Hobson McVeigh. And Yokota deals with that very, very well. Comfortable header. Cushioned header. Well, Hobson McVeigh on the ball again. Butler sprays it and finds Morgan, who's still out on the left-hand side. 1v1 with Scott. Gets his ball in, and then Lissette cuts it out. Plays it away into open spaces, and McNabb's able to just get a touch on. Well, it's a clever ball for Nomoto. Here's Wybop on the counter. Well, played it early into the area, and again, straight into the hands of Robinson. There's... Campbell Kirk War signals half time. And it's 1 0 in favour of the home side, Waitakere United. Well, the action started as early as the first minute when Shaden Young just found the ball breaking favourably and his shot was partially blocked into the arms of Danny Robinson. So, Wobop signalling their intent right from the outset. And it was another chance. This time I th 
Joe Ballin from Jones was dealt with, but only as far as McNabb. And his shot cannoned off the left hand upright. It was a improvised clearance from Shelley only as far as McNabb. And in that shot, well, could have been the opening goal. And a minute later, it was still in Stansfield, just clipping it in for Sam French. And he was able to direct his header into the right hand side of Andy McNeil's goal for the opener. And it just goes to show at ASB Premiership level, you've got to take your chances. And Whitehack's first real chance created the goal. And why Bob try as they may, weren't able to equalise before half time. This time it was Manco against his former club, just creating a little bit of space for himself and just whipping that shot around just wide of Robinson's goal. So it is 1 0 in favour of Waitakere United over Waibop United and Fred Taylor just bathed in the sunshine. We'll be back after the break for the second half of the ASB Premiership match between Waitakere United and Waibop United. Well, welcome back to Fred Taylor Park for this ASB Premiership Round 6 match between Waitakere United in white and Waibop United in all black. Well, just confirmation of the score. 1-0 in favour of the hosts, Waitakere United. Goal in the 12th minute to Sam French. A lovely piece of work from Dylan Stansfield, which gave French the opportunity to head the opening and only goal of the first half. And we are all in readiness here. A beautiful day in Auckland sun shining as we're underway in the second half and it's Waitakere running left to right in the all black strip no changes indicated at half time and it should be said the, the visitors had probably the better of the first half creating more of the opportunities but it was Waitakere who were able to break the deadlock with their only real chance of the match as we see Shaden Young, who was impressive in the first half, just wide on the left there, just taking Reniga on. And a good ball in, flashes across. Well, here is Jones. Skips clear of Loudon. Now gets it on the left and just flashes across well. Almost a carbon copy of the start of the first half for the visitors, Wybop United, with a couple of chances there. And it's still, the score remains. 1-0. Well, I mentioned Shaden Young a lot in the first half, just not afraid to take on Hache Reniga. Just down the left-hand side of Wybop's attack. As Yokota wins that. And this is Morgan, who, for the latter part of the first half, just switched flanks from the right to the left and now finds himself back out. On the right-hand side of Waitakere's attack as Robinson clips that in and out of play. Well, just see Aaron Scott here, just taking the throw and finds Jones. And then the big man, Tyler Lissette, spent a bit of time down at Team Wellington. And now back the mighty Waikato. There's Varela, just bends that one in, looking for the run of McNabb, and cut out by Myers. He finds Hogg, whose cross is blocked by Jones. Manko just spins and hits a half. Well, it hits a shot. It was a half chance, really. Oh, he's French. Not involved a lot outside of that goal in the first half. Taking his opportunity in the absence of Cardozo, who was suspended for this match. So here's Loudon. That's a good ball in. Comfortably dealt with by McNeil, who looks to set Young free on the left-hand side. I just see some activity in front of me on the Waitakere United bench. Looks as though we could see the introduction of Ahmed Al-Shamzi at some point. And in the meantime, 
Robinson just plays the dinked little ball in for Hashe Reniga. Well, that is an ambitious attempt from Nomoto. All of 40 yards and really only threatened the ball boy behind Robinson's goal, who resumes his position. Well, tough day in the sun for the, uh, the ball kids. Blazing conditions here, Fred Taylor Park. Stansfield, he looked impressive last week in holding the ball up with his back to goal. Rewarded with a, a second goal. And he plays another ball in for French. Well, he's looked to roll Yokota. And the Japanese defender wins a free kick. Play with a little ball from Stansfield, who did set up French's opening goal. You just see here. Well, French just looked to roll. His touch was a little heavy and collected Yokota on the way through. Now we saw McNeil in the first half. Just looking to clip it into the channel of the Ybop's right-hand attack. Looking for Jones on Hogg. And well, he's looked at again, but Myers wins that header. Towering header it was from Myers. All the way back to McNeil. Now, uh, will he look to repeat the dose? No, it's a rushed attempt, but it's worked out in Ybop's favour, although Manko couldn't keep position and Butler looking to play that into the channel well a little bit of back and forth back and forth and McNeil just looking to hit that channel again this time it is Hogg and Jones it breaks the way of the home side Aaron Scott wins that over his international teammate Hogg. Both players last involved in Honiara. A 2 0 win for the All Whites during FIFA World Cup qualifying. Fortunately, Hogg picked up his second yellow card of the qualifying campaign in that match and was forced to set up the first leg of the Intercontinental Playoff with Mexico. with the announcement of as Wybop take it quick free kick Galera lobbed it into the box there and a half chance for Manco there's Reniga well, French does well to win that and open spaces for Hogg to attack here down the left hand side well, Jones did well in cover, and Yokota's done even better to prevent the corner. Well, there was nothing but open spaces in front of Hogg, and it was only desperate defending from Mark Jones that prevented a, a more attacking threat on Danny Robinson's goal. Well, I was in the middle of just talking about Ian Hogg and his international aspirations, uh, well, with the friendly between the All Whites and Japan confirmed earlier this week. Hogg may look to add to his international appearances. That will be revealed in the new year. It's Hobson McVeigh. I mentioned was very impressive in the match last week with Hawks Bay United. Full range of passing on display in that match and he is fouled Look like it was fouled by Nomoto there and yeah it was the Japanese player just leaving that trailing leg in on Hobson McVeigh as he played the ball away that's Dan Morgan over the ball and finds Aaron Scott in black. But Loudon, oh, well, shout for a handball. I must admit on first glance, I thought it was a 
A decent shout. Goal kick signalled. Doesn't seem to be too much protestation from the Waitakere bench. And, well, I think some may have given that. But nevertheless, goal kick is awarded. Oh, play on, no. Uh, looks like Campbell Kirk will we'll call Marcel Galera back here in number 11. And it was in attendance at North Harbour Stadium in the match with Waibop United and the Wanderers. There is Galera there and did receive his marching orders in that match for two yellow cards. He didn't complain at all on the second yellow card and marched promptly straight down the tunnel. So he's hoping we finish this match with 11 v 11 as we started. As Stansfield finds Morgan and his ball just drifted in and again a comfortable take from McNeil. And he looks to set Jones free. He can fly Mark Jones. Looking as checks out and finds Aaron Scott as captain. The letter back to Scott. Now looking to create something of an opportunity down the right, but Tim Myers wins that battle. Hog may have been better to let that one drift over the sideline. He's managed to hook that one off Mark Jones. A good battle between those two this afternoon. A little tussle between Maxim Manko and Ian Hogg results in a free kick to Waitakere. Hogg and Peter Smith exchange a little smile there. Well, six of one, half a dozen of the other, if you ask me. I think that was the reason for the exchange between defender and opposition coach. Loudon, that's a oh, that was a good ball. Just couldn't find the run of Dan Morgan. Would have opened up the Wybop defence. So just shy of the hour mark. And we are still 1 0 in favour of. Waitakere United. Wonder if when we hit that 60 minute mark the coaches will start to look to their respective benches to try and change the dynamic of the match. Myers finds Stansfield but his touch lets him down and Jones cleans up for Wybop and it's a clever ball into the channel there. Here's McNabb, 1-1-1 one, one, one with Shelley. Finds Valera, who finds an overlapping Scott. His ball in is dangerous, but comfortable for Robinson. And he sparks a counter-attack through his captain, Jake Butler, who's dropped deep here. Stansfield made a good run and oh, just popped out. Checked his run for Morgan. And they change the pace again. A bit of space out here for Loudon, if Hobson McVeigh can find him. On the broadcast touchline. It's a clever turn from Morgan, and offside. As so McNeil comes off his line to clear that. Well, just slightly ahead of the pack there was Stansfield. It's 
Wobot look to get things moving again. It's been played at a good pace this match, considering the temperatures. I don't want to labour the point, but it is very, very warm here in Auckland. Oh, here's Jones. He's been impressive. Good feet from Jones. Just can't create enough space for a cross. And, well, play on is the call. Well, it's two times play on. I thought that could have been a foul from Aaron Scott, but eventually here we have a stoppage now. Well, letting the game flow is Campbell Kirk War. I wasn't able to let that one flow. Well, I mentioned in the first half how comfortable Lisette and Yokota seemed to be on the ball, and there was another example of it. Just a cushioned header from Lisette to his central defensive partner. Takahiro Yokota. I'm not afraid to keep the ball at the back. It's good to see. Well, Hobson McVeigh does well to skip free and his raking ball for Morgan finds the right midfielder in an offside position. See Aaron Scott down in the top of your picture there. Well, it's just a loose boot. And Yakota will take his time. Don't allow his captain to sort his footwear out. And we're back underway from McNeil. Well, that's only as far as Shelley, who comfortably heads home to his goalkeeper, Danny Robinson. Uh, will Robinson look to play out, or will we... Go long, and we end up going long. Only as far as Scott. French settles it down and gets the ball back from Hogg and eventually wins a free kick. Well, Varela there, and now just involved in a little bit of afters with French. Not sure he would be my pick of opposition that I would be targeting. If I was Varela, here we see shoulder to shoulder and just dragged him down there. Well, Peter Smith just getting animated, obviously disagreeing with that decision, which has resulted in this free kick for Waitakere United. And it's Shelley, an advanced role. Well, he's going further advanced. It's the Waitakere co-coach. Uh, tripped up on my words there. Well, he's won his team a corner. And if you haven't already caught up with the result from Wellington in the ASB Premiership, that match has finished 3-2 in favour of Team Wellington over Wanderers SC. First time that the young Wanderers squad have not scored a goal in stoppage time. So that record has been broken. Oh, good technique from Loudon and it flashes past McNeil's goal. So Team Wellington back to winning ways after their 2-0 defeat last week. And we just see the ball coming out here for Loudon. And it was good technique hitting it on the volley and flashed wide of... McNeil's goal. Well, there's another example of Lissette. Just comfortable on the ball under seeming pressure. Enough to take that extra touch and play home to his goalkeeper. Well, this Just a couple of little 
Just little shoves, little shoulders after the after the play. Paul Temple did make a point about discipline to his charges during training this week. Of course, they suffered two red cards last week, finishing that match with nine men against Hawks Bay United. So I'm sure he will want to keep all 11 on the pitch again this week. And hogs ball into the channel, doesn't find any willing runners in the attacking third. And there's, again, Lissette just playing through the two Waitakere front men. Finding Yokota. And they're able to spark something of a counter-attack. Well, good retention of the ball there from the visitors. And there's Noel overhit. That one was overhit, but it was a good passage of of play. Hobson McVeigh, clever piece of skill to get away, but he can't retain position. Here's Nomoto. Masaki Nomoto. Well, Shaden Young. Well, Robinson's not happy with that one, although it has. Well, I was going to say it has found a white shirt, but Yokota winning that challenge. Oh, here's Hogg again, finding a bit of space on that left-hand side of the pitch. Just checks and finds Loudon. Well, telegraphed that a little bit, did young Loudon. And Lissette. Oh, well, it's full-blooded. That well, was Mark Jones, I should say. Not title to set. Varela finds Scott. It's a teasing ball. Oh, Robinson. Didn't look comfortable, just flicked out at it. Well, it was a good ball in from Scott. One of the one of those teasing balls, which as a goalkeeper you don't know whether to come or to stay. And the end, Robinson decided to come and got a little flick on it. Well, that's worked out for Wybot, but a little sloppy. A little bit of fatigue, perhaps, creeping in. That's a good ball from Aaron Scott. He's fine, Manko. Manko's won the header. Here's a chance. Young! Oof. Well, good work from Shelley. Come across and cover that. Man, strong defence. The Irishman to win a goal kick for his side. That looks as though there could be a sub coming up for Wybop. I wonder if it'll be the young goal scorer from last week, Reed Drake. Of course, scored a uh, fantastic, fantastic volley. One of his first meaningful contributions to that 4 2 win for Wybop over Southern last weekend in Cambridge. Drake, I mentioned early in the commentary about the, the region of the Federation being represented in the Wybop team. Well, Reed Drake is another one. His brother Danyan, reserve goalkeeper. There's Yokota wins that. Well, both plays with a fistful of shirt and Varela ends up winning that one. Strong defence. Well, they've given that away cheaply, why bop? Only as far as Loudon. That's a clever little ball in for Sam French. 
Yakota. Well. When the ball goes into the penalty area like that, it is. Hold your breath and see what happens. And Campbell Kirk Wars found a free kick in favour of Wybop. Well, it was French and Yakota. Eventually French penalised for his attentions on Yakota, but then McNeil came flying out. And he thought for a second, are oh, we going to have a penalty? Well, McNeil has had a, made a habit of saving penalties this year. Saved two, but on both occasions, the rebounds bundled home. Most notably, 3-3 uh, three, three draw with the Wanderers at North Harbour Stadium. He was none too pleased with the initial decision, and also the fact that he got a good connection with that penalty from Nick Sugden. Unable to keep the rebound out. Here's Nomoto. Well, he can't control that. You get the feeling a little bit of fatigue starting to creep in with both sides. And it looks as though we will see young Reed Drake into this match. For Wybop. Started his football career in the Hawks Bay and moved to Taupo AFC. St. Peter's College and Narawahia United in the Northern Premier League. That's, a, that's an interesting tussle there between French and Yokota. Well, a lot of eyes on that one. It's Mark Jones making way. Well, here he is. So it's Mark Jones who's had an impressive afternoon, should be said. Worked really, really hard down that right flank and it's young Reed Drake. There he is there. Well, you might wonder how I know so much about him. I was lucky enough to play with him. As a must have been all of 13 or 14 years old for Narawahia Reserves. He's certainly grown up and good to see him following that pathway in his home federation for Wybop. Here's Aaron Scott, his captain. And as far as Butler. Well, it's a good ball from Loudon. And a composed defending of Lissette. Well, I thought that had won him, won him a throw, but last touch must have flicked off the Wybop defender. Oh, Hogg. There's no white shirts there at all. And the moto. Oh, Varela. Here's, Dr here's Drake. First touch is a good one, and well, he's just over hit that ball to McNabb. The striker just making a nuisance of himself with Raniga. Morgan does well. Cuts inside, and oh, it's a good ball, but Stansfield just couldn't do anything with it. And Hobson McVeigh's done well to win that as well. Oh, it's a lovely ball. Well, his range of passing just now starting to come to the fore. Jack Hobson McVeigh. It's Raniga. It's Raniga, and his shot is smothered by McNeil. Well, a good passage of play. Great vision from Hobson McVeigh to find galloping Hache Raniga. And here he was, just cutting inside, getting it onto that left foot, and saved McNeil covered. Well, it's been an entertaining match. Paul Temple before the match said, in, in years gone by, you might have looked at the team coming up. Oh, great touch. Here's Manco. Oh. Well, Tim Myers, strong defending. It was a great touch from McNabb. Well, I was saying, speaking to Paul Temple before the match, he was saying with respect to entities gone by, you would look at a... Well... Well, another half chance. Let me wait until we've got a, a lull in play before I try and get my point out as Robinson. Just a couple of moments of interest in his penalty area. And I think we're going to see another substitution here. And it is. It's on the Waitakere side this time, and it's Dan Morgan making way for Jared Young. 
Well, Morgan's had a good afternoon in my opinion. And now it's time for another Young to enter the field. No relation to Wybop's Shade and Young, but they could be marking each other at some point in time, which is a commentator's dream. Myers clears his lines. Well, I'll try and get this point out for the third time. Paul Temple was talking about, in years gone by, a team from the other side of the Bombay Hills would come up to Auckland, and if you, he was saying, if you got your basics right, you could almost guarantee three points. Well, he didn't feel that was the case today, and that's a agricultural challenge from Hobson McVeigh, and that's a yellow card. I don't think he has any real reason to complain on that one. Nowhere. Nowhere near the ball. Well, no, he doesn't seem to get a piece of that ball at all. A galloping Marcel Galera. I've never really understood this. The decision's been made. You've received the yellow card. Do you really need to try and argue the point any more than you already have? Although it does make an opportunity to take the sting out of the attack and to stunt the momentum. So, free kick, all of 30 yards away from Danny Robinson's goal. And we have Drake and Namoto over the ball. Well, young Reed Drake after his goal last week. Might fancy his chances here. He is a natural left footer. Let's see. Now it's Namoto and oh well it's taken a little bump right in front of Robinson and he Well he's done well to deal with that, but it was one of the may have lost sight of it right at the last part of the trajectory. Here's there's the free kick there and it just jumped up on him. And away for a corner. Well, heart and mouth stuff for Robinson. We've got Namoto over the ball here on the Corner kick, that's a good ball in, and away by French, the goal scorer. Now oh, this match is really finely, finely poised here. One nil the lead, entering the last quarter. And Wybop really pushing for this equaliser. I don't know if we can see him in picture there, but we've got big George Sleffendorfus with his game day shirt on. It looks as though he will get a chance shortly as Peter Smith pushes at least to equalise, if not the full three points. Here's Namoto inside the area. Off to Drake. It's a little chip ball in. Well, all 11 of Waitakere's players in their half defending. Well, Drake in acres of space. Time to bring that down and telegraph his pass a little bit, but he's won that back. Here's Valera. Just switches the point of attack. Shaden Young, well, he's won that. Uh, broken out for a goal kick. Well, they're really pushing hard for this equaliser, Wybop. You've got to take your chances, and really, while they are pushing for the win, it's been a game of few real clear cut chances. McNabb in the first half struck the upright. And Waitakere really have only had one clear cut chance to this man, French. And oh, well, two chances, two goals. French does the damage. Well, it was a clever ball in, took it on the run, and unleashed a left foot shot. Flash past McNeil. Well. Case in point, you have to take your chances in the ASB Premiership, and Waitakere have done through that man, Sam French. 
second goal of the day and a 2-0 lead for the home side and it must be said a little bit against the run of play well Peter Smith is forced to his bench to try and salvage something out of this game and it will be George Sleffendorfus replacing Jack McNabb well Sleffendorfus with an impressive scoring record for Canterbury United a couple of years ago came out to Fred Taylor Park for the first half of last season was released in the transfer window and now he pops back up on the ASB Premiership radar this time in Wybop colours well that really was a smash and grab effort from Sam French I was just in the middle of making a point on having to take your chances and no sooner had I started the diatribe and there was the second goal well 2-0 entering the last 10 minutes Yeah, young man Drake. A clever touch from Manko to bring that one down. Oh, Nomoto. Oh, that's a free kick. Hobson McVeigh needs to be careful here. He's already on a yellow card not too long ago. And uh, was it just a trailing leg from Hobson McVeigh? Well, my Bop would feel they would need to score here, I believe, to give themselves a chance of dragging themselves back into this match. A signal from Peter Smith on the Wybop bench to his team, 10 minutes to play, plus any stoppages, but that's correct. We enter the 80th minute, and it's Reed Drake in 24, and Masaki Nomoto over the ball. Nomoto so far has pulled rank on all set pieces. I wonder whether it's a different tack. And it is Drake, and he's got that one only as far as the Waitakere wall. Well, another set piece opportunity. Manko has tried to create a little bit of space there. Hasn't worked out, and again, all 11 of Waitak. Oh, tripped on that name again. I've heard it pronounced Waitakere before, but it's Waitakere. All 11 of their players in their own half. Well, Sleffendorfus goes hunting for that header and doesn't find it. Clever touch from Varela. And only as far as Tim Myers. Oh, nice footwork, Jake Butler. He's looked good today. Well, <laughs> I sooner have I paid the Waitakere captain a compliment he's furious with himself for a sloppy pass sets high standards but it was good footwork in the initial stages to get himself out of trouble as that one floats over and we get a little breeze coming through the commentary area which is a welcome I can tell you it's very hot here at Fred Taylor Park a beautiful day Oh, Drake's given that away, and here's Butler now. Stansfield's made a good run. Well, he's just straight offside. Just went a little early. It's well defended from Wybop. Held their line. Oh, Drake's just got himself into a bit of trouble and managed to get out of it. Uh, this one you can see right on the touchline or there are thereabouts from Hogg and he's looking for options and the end clips it into space finds Stansfield 
And it's hooked away by Scott. Well, well clever from Hogg. And he's lost that one out. And a free kick. And, well, takes a free kick quickly, does Varela. And this has sparked something. Here's Reed Drake. Well, his ball finds Sleffendorfus. What can the big man do? Oh, good feet. Oh, here's Drake. Oh, Sleffendorfus. Oh, Scott, that's a good challenge. And Hobson McVeigh. Yeah, he's going to find himself. He could be in trouble here. He's already been booked. It's his second foul in quick succession. Well, good management from War. It's Namoto. He's got a few targets, and again, all 11. In and around the penalty area for Waitakere United. It's Namoto over the ball. How's his delivery? No, not as far. Not past the first defender, I should say, Ian Hogg. Oh, Aaron Scott. Oh, there's black shirts everywhere there. And here is Manko. Oh, just try to play cute with Yokota and couldn't get the return past Manko but if he did he would have been through on goal and then allowed and just settles things all the way back in the Y bop in defensive third there's young Reed Drake gets a turn on finds Manko who rolls Ian Hogg and drives away here's Shaden Young hasn't seen a lot of the ball in the second half Shaden Young oh that flashes wide and that is the danger of Young well, good work down the left. And that ball just flashed across Danny Robinson's six-yard box, and no one at the far post able to put it in. Well, here's Young. Well, there it is, and it was Sleffendorfus, I think. Well, here is a sub for Waitakere. Interesting one at that, and it's Jake Butler coming off, the captain, placed by Ahmed Al Shamsi. In number 27. Five minutes to go for regular time, plus any time added on. So Al Shamsi comes on. He's handed the captain's armband by Butler. He'll probably trot off and hand that armband over to Tim Myers, who then decides, Brian Shelley, you should have it. And ends up going all the way back to Danny Robinson. Well, I'm not sure whether this is a little bit of time wasting from the Waitakere United team. A little past the parcel for the captain's armband and the music stopped on Danny Robinson. And back with the action here for Wybop's captain, Aaron Scott, who gives it straight to Hobson McVeigh, who clips a ball in, a clever ball too, for Stansfield in a bit of space. 1v1 with Lissette. Stanf Stansfield, well, I thought he was going to shot, shape to shoot, just clipped it in to French who finds El Shamsi, and Young, and great goal. Well, a very well-worked team goal. And it's Jared Young, well taken on the edge of the penalty area. And it's French, got the touch away. El Shamsi, a first-time ball, and Young takes it quickly. Well, great interplay. And there he is, Jared Young. With a the goal there, and that's 3-0. And a good afternoon's work for Waitakere United. See a substitution and maybe a sensible decision here from Temple. And maybe Shelley. Not sure how much input Shelley has in the substitutions when he's playing on the field. But it's 23 Hobson McVeigh replaced by 3 Alex Solomons. Confirmation 3-0. So Solomons comes on to... I would say strength in the defensive line. It looks as though Shelley's pushed forward into a more advanced position in the middle of midfield. So it's both central midfielders for Waitakere replaced. Captain Jake Butler and Jack Hobson-McVeigh. And the score 3-0.
clinical performance this afternoon from Waitakere. They've soaked up the pressure from the visitors. And a real smash and grab. Three chances, three real chances and three goals. And at this stage, with two and a half minutes of regular time to go, you would suggest three points in favour of the West Aucklanders. But it's a funny old game. And we've seen stranger things happen. As Varela gets on the ball. Yakota. Here's Namoto. Uh, just tries to play it into the channel there, and Manko is on a different wavelength. Well, you have to feel for Waibop. They've really, really gone at Waitakere today. Been unable to come up with anything. Well. Oh, clever feet. Varela and fine slip and Dorfus. Well. Solomon's first meaningful contribution was a great block on Sliff and Dorfus, and Hogg shins that one to safety. Well, Alex Solomon's just shows how switched on he was uh, entering the field of play a few moments earlier with a great block on George Sliff and Dorfus to maintain that clean sheet. Yeah, Danny Robinson, no doubt, will be thankful. He's been impressive. Well, Sleffendorfus uses his body well there. Well, some may have thought that was a foul. And it looks as though we will have three minutes of additional time here. Well, it'll be a goal a minute if Wybob had to salvage something from this game. Here's Namoto. What can he do? Four in front of him. Finds links with Young. Young's ball in. Well, straight offside to the young Shaden Young. And that's unfortunate. When Namoto looked up, he had four to aim for. Nice little interplay with Sliff and Dorfus. And unfortunately, Shaden Young just drifted into an offside position. And that opportunity was snuffed out. Well, it looks as though this one will finish in favour of Waitakere. Two goals to Sam French, one to Jared Young. And a pretty professional performance from the defending ASB Premiership champions. Season a change here at Fred Taylor. A number of Players moving on, a number of new faces in, but this one looks as though they will skip clear at the top of the ASB Premiership table, at least for a week. And can Stansfield wrap it up? Well, fell invitingly for the young striker. But he was unable to take his chance. Well, as I mentioned... Looks as though Waitakere will take a three-point lead on Auckland City at the top of the ASB Premiership table. Auckland City, of course, back in action next week in the last round of the ASB Premiership for 2013 before action gets back underway early in the new year. And, of course, the first game at Fred Taylor Park will be on the 12th of January. And they get something out of this game. Or at least ruin this man's clean sheet. Kirk War checks his watch. And I think it's just a matter of time before we hear the final whistle, but 
In the meantime, it's Nomoto. He's tried all afternoon. Masaki Nomoto. Uh, Shelley puts that one away for a corner. So a look of dejection on Peter Smith's face. Maybe they can salvage a goal here. Who knows? Maybe goal difference will be crucial come the business end of the season for that playoff place. Nomoto's delivery. And Robinson comes and, well, he's happy. Robinson did enough. Here's the final whistle. So it's Waitakere United 3, Waibop United 0. And a professional performance from the defending champions. Uh, let's check out, check out some of the second half highlights. And an opportunity for Waibop. They started the half strongly. And it was Aaron Scott's ball in. Caused too much concern for Danny Robinson. And the Waitakere goal. Really good game, Robinson. He'll be extremely happy. And at the other end, it was Loudon with great technique on the volley and just flash past McNeil's goal. He's been impressive, Loudon. Didn't get on the score sheet today. And it was a, an opportunity. And this end on shot will be glorious. Well, just away at the last moment. And again, Wybop at this stage, the match still 1 0. And a little bit of concern in the Waitakere penalty area. Robinson to the rescue, diving at the feet there bravely to maintain his clean sheet. And still 1 0. Game on. But at the other end, really only the third chance of the match for the home side. And it was a sloppy piece of work there. Two passes, a great touch for French, and just rifled it home past McNeil. That first touch, just to put it in front of him, was superb. There it is there, and the finish. Well, not too many were going to keep that one out. It was an absolutely superb strike. Hit the net rising, which is always a sign of a, a, great, a great strike. So 2-0. And again, Wybop just pushing, trying to make a game of it. And it was Shaden Young, who didn't see much of the ball in the second half, just flashed his ball across goal. And Sleffendorfus, who'd come on at that stage, was just unable to get something on that to put it home. And the last goal, the third goal, was a great piece of play. Just clever link-up work. French, Alshamzi had come on, and the other substitute, Jared Young, who'd come on, just finished that first time. Just look at this ball from Alshamzi, just right into the run of Jared Young. And just rifled it at home for a 3-0. For a great 3-0 win. Well, let's get some comment sideline from the two teams. As Fred Taylor Park is bathed in sunshine here. As we get some reaction to this 3-0 result in favour of Waitakere United. Well, Peter, you threw everything but the kitchen sink at Waitakere and just uh, came up empty-handed, unfortunately. You must be frustrated with that uh, that performance. Oh, fr frustrated, but obviously proud of the way the lads. I mean, the lads worked real hard, and as you say, you know, Waitakere, three chances, and then they stuck the chances away. I mean, so, I mean, from a, from a coaching perspective, real happy and how how... How the lads worked. Um, however, there's just those wee lapses that we need to we need to work on. Um, and I say three chances, and at the end of the day, it's about putting the ball in the back of the net, isn't it? Uh, you must be proud. I mean, I know you've spent a lot of time before the season and during the season just trying to build on the team's culture. Um, I guess in the past, teams coming up from south of the Bombay's might have been seen as, as easy beats. Your team put a really good shift in today. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, we had, we had a good camp um, pre-season and then we worked real hard on the values and the standards and, and I guess, you know, being, being real credible and, and, and actually, you know, playing the top teams in, in the country and, and, and competing with them. You know, and I think we're trying to do that. There, there's a good ethic within the, within the group that, you know, there's, there's a strong um, values and ethics in there and, and, you know, the lads, to be fair, are, are, are digging in and, you know, they're, they're training well, they're working well and there's, aye, there's, there's it's a, it's, a, it's a good group to, to be working with for sure. In the past, with respect to teams south of the Bombay Hills, you, you may have thought of this as, as three points in the bag today. They made it hard for you. Yeah, I think it's a sign of the league. Like this year, the, the teams have really upped their game that have been outside of the top four in the past. And we're seeing really strong performances from Waikato against some of the top sides uh, Hawke's Bay, Canterbury, Wellington. You know, they're all lifting their game. 
the Wanderers have uh, got something in the bag as well in terms of an upset. I think you know they've got good players, so the league's really competitive, and we knew that we were going to be up against it today. And I'm just pleased that we're able to get back to winning ways. I guess uh, it, it's a good sign for you that a guy like Sam French can come in and start and put two goals away. Yeah, well, it makes our job hard. You know, Richie's been doing a good job up there, and it's nice when you have that uh, that strength and depth where players come in and, and take their opportunity. And he did that. You know, he had to work really hard. There was a lot of aerial ball when he was competing, but when the ball was on the deck, he uh, he did well. His second goal was was fantastic. And uh, one more week, and then you can put your feet up for Christmas. Are you looking forward to a little bit of a break? Yeah, I think everyone's looking forward to a break. There's a few players that need it. They've been playing all through the winter, um, but got to be professional again, go down to Canterbury, get another result, and then uh, put ourselves in a good position leading into the second half of the season. Thanks, Paul. So that concludes this ASB Premiership Round 6 match between Waitakere United and Waibop United. The score finishing 3-0 in favour of the defending champions Waibop, uh, Waitakere United. And we will catch you again in 2014. For me, Seamus Martin, thank you very much, and we'll see you next year.